Today, landfilling is one of our main methods of disposal. But what if landfills were phased out entirely? Germany has vowed to stop landfilling by 2020, and the rest of the European Union hopes to follow close behind. As we move towards a landfill-free future, one of the terms you'll be hearing is materials and energy recovery. Turning waste into electricity and heat. Incineration is the old term for materials and energy recovery. Another is waste to energy. But whatever the terminology, the idea is to divert materials from landfills and extract as much as possible before disposal. You have to look at it historically. I think originally waste was burned to reduce the volume and to destroy the contaminants in it. And then people recognized that you know, there's, if it burns well, there's got to be a lot of energy in it. And people started utilizing the energy, and, and especially in countries where energy was expensive, this has turned out to be actually quite profitable. One of those countries is Germany, which in 2005 banned all untreated waste from landfills and aims at eliminating landfills entirely by 2020. Landfills are shifting just the problems to next generations, so you don't to come to a, a solution for the problem. German scientists Dr. Michael Velsen and Dr. Helmut Schnurr visited Seattle recently to provide information to local officials about materials and energy recovery. Germany has used this approach for many years and according to Dr. Schnurr, modern methods have little in common with older technology. This has been uh, solved uh, quite, I would say, perfectly uh, by new technologies which cannot compare to the grandfather incinerators which we had 20, 30 years ago. Um, I've, I've been in Germany and they have showed me emission tests where the air coming out of the stack is actually cleaner than the air on the street in front of the plant. And that was a hazardous waste incinerator. Eliminating landfills has a number of benefits, perhaps the most important being the elimination of the methane gas they produce. Methane is, uh, is more climate damage potential than carbon dioxide and that was the main reason we said stop um, landfilling of, untre of untreated waste. The, the other thing you have to realize is that part of the waste is actually biogenic. It's wood, it's paper, it's organics, uh, stuff that doesn't get caught in the recycling stream, uh, paper that's been contaminated with, with kitty litter or something else is just not going to be recycled. Uh, it's going to go to a waste to energy plant and it is considered biogenic. And the third thing in that equation is the power that you make from waste to energy offsets or can offset coal-fired power. And coal-fired power is the greatest emitter of CO2 emissions that we have. Germany has 73 waste to energy facilities in operation. A recent scientific study has found that the impact of these plants has meant the reduction of 50 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalents per year. We are quite happy that we have contributed with our waste policy not only in order to avoid uh, problems with landfills, with leachate, contaminating of, of water, but also uh, contributing, contributing to the climate protection. In 2006, we launched the Zero Waste Challenge to make a determined attempt to reduce the amount of waste that has to go to landfills in the first place. At a recent Council of Councils meeting to address the issue of solid waste in the region, one of the topics was the looming closure of the Cash Creek landfill. Materials and energy recovery is seen as part of the solution to reducing our need to landfill. Are we capable of making the leap from a plan and an approach and a philosophy that says essentially waste like the poor will always be with us, at least for decades to come, or can we make the leap to a different plan that says we are committed to waste no longer existing and instead being transformed into a resource where the vast majority of it never enters the waste stream because of these activities and of that which does enter the waste stream, the vast majority will go into this portion here where we try and recover the, the material and energy qualities that are still left in it. At this meeting, and a special meeting of the Waste Management Committee, a wide array of technologies was presented. Some proven, some promising but untried. All are under consideration. So many alternative technologies have been developed, but uh, speaking frankly, only few of them 
proved to be able to cope with the different properties of municipal solid waste. Currently, Metro Vancouver operates a single waste to energy facility in Burnaby. The plant produces steam heat and electricity, has stringent emission standards, and handles about 20% of the region's waste. Under the new waste strategy, the region could see more facilities added by 2015. These plants will be capable of handling the 30% of the waste stream not dealt with by recycling. I, I don't think it's a question of whether or not you extract the energy from the waste. I think from a waste manager's perspective, from a planner's perspective, I would say that's a given. Uh, you don't want to put that energy into the ground. The question is, what technology, what approach do you use to recover that energy and, of course, the materials that are still in that waste stream?